Luke chapter 21, verses 34 to 36. Luke chapter 21, verses 34 to 36. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your heart be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. This is part four in the series of the teachings titled Watch and Pray. In part one, we did a teaching on Watch and Pray unto Perseverance. And we did the teaching on perseverance explaining that things can go wrong when we have done nothing wrong. That is the way God has ordered our Christian experience. Then we studied part two, watch and pray that ye fall not into temptation. Be spiritually alert so that you can handle every trial. Last week, we did part three. Watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. Nobody knows the day it's all going to end. The world may continue for some more years, and yet for an individual, the end could come. Nobody knows. And last week, Sunday, we stressed the need for us to watch before we pray. And we cited as example the Nigerian church that prayed fervently, prayed intensively, conducted series of programs for prosperity, for blessings, for breakthrough, for abundance, for over 30 years. And you know, 30 years is a generation. So a whole generation Focused prayers on prosperity, breakthrough, promotion, upliftment. And at the end of it all, Nigeria became poverty capital of the world. Instead of prosperity, poverty came and made Nigeria its headquarters. Globally. Nigeria overtook India as the poverty capital of the world. So what happened to all the prayers? What happened to all the miracle service, anointing service, mantle service, retreat, convention, congress, vigils? What happened? Nigeria church was praying irrelevant prayers. And they spent an entire generation praying irrelevant prayers. Prayers that did not reach the presence of God. One can say 
that rather than produce blessings, the prayers brought to the other one. Because it wasn't only poverty. Nigeria became the capital of terrorism. Became capital of murder. Global murder. Bloodshed. Everything just. And yet the church was praying intensively. If it can happen to Nigeria, it can happen to an individual. It can happen to a family. It can happen to a group. Watch and pray. Be spiritually alert so that you can pray the right kind of prayers. Don't just be busy praying and congratulating yourself and yet the prayer is not going anywhere. I remember that 22 years ago, in 2001, God made me write a book titled Beware of Success. That book warned Nigerian church about this prosperity message that was trending. I started receiving that message around 1998. Beware of success. Beware of success. This prosperity message will get the Nigerian church into trouble. Of course, when the book came out, Christians abused me. Very few people said you did the right thing. They abused me. It was years later that some pastors read the book and said, we wish we had read this book I we wish we had read this book 10 years ago. Pastors, I wish I had read this book many, many years ago. May the Lord help us even as we continue today. Now, the teaching today, watch and pray. So that you can be counted worthy to escape. We only make sense to an individual whose goal in life is eternal life. You see all these series of teachings that we are doing, it can only make sense to you if your goal is eternal life. Jesus Christ promised us eternal life. Jesus Christ says the reason he came is to give us everlasting life. 1 John chapter 2 verse 25 1 John chapter 2 verse 25 and this is the promise which he has promised us even eternal life. John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world, such that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The only purpose why you are a Christian is eternal life. If eternal life is not your goal, you are wasting your time in the church. The church was not designed, the church was not established for prosperity, for breakthrough, for, uh, for all the things that the church is talking about now. It is eternal life. If eternal life is not your goal, you are wasting your time. The scripture says, Watch therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape. Because certain things are going to happen and they are already taking place. If you notice, 
Most people are trying to escape one thing or the other. Maybe you are listening to me this morning. You are also trying to escape something. Man is always trying to escape one thing or the other. Some people are trying to escape poverty. That's why they walk and walk. That's why they, oh, they won't sleep. They work very hard, sincerely hard. Why? They are trying to escape from poverty. Some people are trying to escape from an abusive relationship. There are men trying to escape an abusive marriage. There are women trying to escape an abusive marriage. There are people trying to escape an abusive office. They want to escape it. And of course, you know the most common one in Nigeria. People are trying to escape from Nigeria. So many people. In fact, very close to our office is the, a, a, a consulate of the UK a British Embassy. You have to see the crowd there every day. The crowd every day. People wanting to escape from Nigeria. And as they are at the British consulate, you find them at the American embassy, you find them at the Canadian embassy. Crowd, they want to escape from Nigeria. Jesus says, what you should focus on is how to escape from hell. Say so that is the one that you should focus on. How do you escape from hell? Because, my dear, if you escape poverty, you escape abusive relationship, you escape from Nigeria, but you do not escape from hell. Ah. That's, a, that's a serious problem. And that problem is not a problem of one year. It's not a problem of 10 years. One billion years, the problem has just started. Because that is eternity. Whoever does not escape from hell, spends eternity in hell. It was strange to hear. I heard it during the week. I saw the video of a senior pastor preaching in Nigeria. I don't know whether you saw the video. And the pastor was saying, and he kept affirming and repeating it, that in their own church, God did not send them to preach hell and rapture. He said, yes, he knows those things are... There are Christian doctrines that hell is in the Bible. Jesus coming again is in the Bible. And people are preaching it, but God did not send them to preach it in their own church. Ah. Ah. And in that denomination, there are millions of people there. Now, if God did not send them to preach hell and preach rapture, then what did God send them to preach? Then what is the message? God sent them to preach prosperity, to preach breakthrough, to preach promotion. Ah. So, Oga, why did Jesus come now? Ah. Why did Jesus come? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, Mary will give birth to a son and you shall call his name Jesus because he will save his people from their sin. From their sins. Why is Jesus coming to save people from their sins? That is why he came. Because sin will take man into hell. In 1 John 3, 
verse 8, the Bible says, For this purpose, the Son of Man, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. What is the works of the devil? Sin. The purpose for which Jesus came is to destroy sin so that man will not go into hell. He went to the cross to shed his blood to, for the forgiveness of the sins of man so that man will not go into hell. He is coming back on the day of rapture to take his people home to the kingdom of God. That is the gospel. That is the good news. The good news is you don't have to go to hell. Because Jesus has paid the price. And the pastor says, God did not send their own church to preach that. Then what did God send their church to preach? And I felt very sorry for every soul in that congregation. Every soul in that ministry. I felt very sorry for them. Because if your shepherd does not catch the vision of eternal life. If your shepherd cannot see the danger that is in hell, you are in serious trouble. Because he's not going to lead you to the way of escape. I feel sorry for the members of that congregation. May God deliver them. Luke chapter 21. You can divide the entire chapter into two sections. You can look at verses 1 to 33. It talks about global issues that will come to pass. Verses 34 to 36 talks about spiritual issues. And Jesus is stressing in the three verses that we read spiritual alertness. Spiritual alertness. That brethren, watch. That watch is not just simply open your physical eyes. It means let your spiritual sensitivity, your spiritual alertness, let it be sharp. Be able to discern, be able to see beyond the physical, be able to see what ordinary eyes cannot see. Be sensitive to changes in your atmosphere. The slightest spiritual change around you, be sensitive to it. Watch. Don't fall asleep. Don't slumber. Don't become spiritually dense. Be spiritually alert. Be spiritually awake. Because there is an enemy that wants to rob you of the greatest gift that God has given you. Eternal life. Look, Christian, the greatest gift that God gave you is not money. It's not a car. It's not success. It's not a career. It is salvation of your soul. In the past two days, I went again to listen to the testimony of the brother that Jesus took to hell for 23 minutes. You can Google it. It is titled 23 Minutes in Hell. This is another testimony different from that of Mrs. Uh, Catherine Baxter. Just 23 minutes in hell. You need to listen to it and feel sorry for the congregation that their pastor says God did not send them to preach hell and rapture. There are three enemies of spiritual alertness. Three enemies. And they are all mentioned in verse 34. Remember last week Sunday, we said, take heed. Wherever you find Jesus says, take heed. You need to pay attention to that verse. Take heed. He's giving you a warning. But pay attention. Then when Jesus now combines, take heed with watch and pray. Ah, 
then that's a double caution. We saw it in Mark chapter 13, verse 33, last Sunday, our text for last Sunday. We are seeing it again here today. In verse 34, Jesus says, take heed. In verse 36, Jesus says, watch therefore and pray always. Double caution. The three enemies of spiritual alertness, they are in verse 34. And take heed to yourself, lest at any time your heart be overcharged, be overburdened. You are consumed with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. If anybody becomes overtaken by surfeiting, drunkenness, cares of this life, the crucial day, everybody has a crucial day. That day will come upon him unawares. Unawares. He will be busy. He will be busy. And what really matters will catch him unawares. Let's look at those three words very quickly. What is surfeiting? A Bible passage, a Bible translation calls it carousing. I decided to check the Hebrew word. What does it actually mean in the original Hebrew word? It means headache. <laughs> headache. You know the headache that we have? And uh, we use Panadol or Paracetamol. Aha. That is it. So it's like saying... Take heed to yourself, lest at any time your heart be overcharged with headache. Now, what headache? Of course, you know there are times when you get yourself so worried. Because there is no money, because there is lack, and your head begins to ache. <laughs> and your head begins to ache. And then you lose appetite. And then you look so sad. You look so drawn. You start drying up. Headache. When you worry yourself so much. Anxiety. About the things of the world. It happens when a man has been unemployed for a long time. And he wakes up in the morning, he does not know what to do with himself. It's a terrible situation. And head, head begins to ache. Or the rent is due. The landlord is knocking. The school fees of the children have not been paid. You look in the kitchen. The food is running out. And the children must eat. And you just don't know where will the answer come from. And the head begins to ache. Jesus said, don't let your head ache. Because if you get consumed with such anxiety, you will begin to lose spiritual alertness. We must all learn how to connect with God particularly in times of need. How do I connect with God? Because all the problems that we have, all our needs have already been met. The problem with many of us is that we are not staying in the right place at the right time. That, that, look, if man has any problem, that is the first problem, disobedience. There are people who have made up their mind it is in Lagos alone they can live and they will prosper. And God has been telling them for years, leave Lagos. Leave Lagos. And say, I can't leave Lagos. So I right, go back to where? Say, so go back to your town. Ah, God forbid, I can't. 
I can't go back. The shame, they will say, I did, ah. God said, go back. That is where your resources are. There are people who are fighting tooth and nail to go to UK. I must get to UK. I must leave Nigeria. And God says, sit down where you are. Don't go. Ah, no, I must travel. If I don't travel, I will. And they do everything they travel. They get there, they discover. Oh, talk to some of those who are there. Talk to some of them. Let them open up. We can't talk about the experiences of some of them. Some even produce video. Advising people who are in Nigeria, don't come home. Oh. Stay where you are. If you think it is bad there, it's because you have not reached here. Oh. The greatest problem that we have, that our needs are not met, is obedience. Obedience. If we can just learn to obey God, you will discover that everything that you need has been provided. Your fa uh, it's your father now. Jesus says, which of you earthly father? His son will ask him for a fish. He will give him a serpent. Or his son will ask him for bread. He will give him a stone. I say, if you, you, as wicked as you are, as unrighteous as you are, you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give you the Holy Ghost? How much more will your heavenly father give you all that you need? God has given you all that you need. The problem is man believes that he has figured it out and God doesn't know anything. The scripture says that it's a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof is destruction. That is the problem of man. So if you find yourself having headache because your needs are not met, go and ask the Almighty God, am I where I am supposed to be? Because if you are not where you are supposed to be, you will not receive what God has given you. You can't now. God won't bring you to come and meet you where you are. You must stay where God says you should stay. You must be where God wants you to be for you to receive what God has proposed. For every child of God, there is divine provision. God is a good father. That is number one. That causes spiritual slumber. Because you get consumed by your problems and by your needs and your spiritual antenna. It just becomes dull. Then the second one is drunkenness. The things that will cause spiritual slumber. Drunkenness. What is drunkenness? Party spirit. Party spirit. Revelling. And it is common now in the church. It is common amongst Christians. That is why when they go to church, even the pastors, they, they try to psych the people and make sure the people shout. It's like, it's like giving them drug. The music, the praises, yes, it is good to praise God. We are not saying that you should not praise God. But Christian worship is fast becoming entertainment. In most assemblies, it is nothing but entertainment, entertaining the people. It is drunkenness. It is that party spirit. At every opportunity, Christians, they are going to throw a party. In the church, outside the church, in fact, they have now brought in the custom of the Yorubas, the tradition of the Yorubas, Ashwebi, inside the church. I shall be. They will take the same, they will all dress in the same uniform and they are going to sell the clothes to them. 
party spirit. It is the exact opposite of soberness. Soberness that produces vigilance. When the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8, be sober, be vigilant. Be vigilant is be watchful, be awake, be alert, because your enemy. Wherever you find the party spirit, you find spiritual slumber. People are just shouting. But spiritually, they are dense. The third thing is the chaos of this life. You find the reference in Luke chapter 8 verse 14. Luke chapter 8 verse 14. We, we quickly read that. Luke chapter 8 verse 14. And that which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. And that which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with cares and the riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. Luke chapter 30, Luke 21, verse 34 calls it the cares of this life. So you understand it. All these are things that produce spiritual slumber. Very few Christians are free from these three vices. Very, very few Christians. From surfeiting, drunkenness, and cares of this life. Very few Christians. And Jesus is warning, these three things, they will hinder you from being spiritually alert. They will hinder you. The situation is made worse by the prosperity message which promises fame and wealth. As we shared earlier, Nigerian church indulged in need for one generation for 30 years. And at the end of it all, disaster struck. Everything about the country collapsed. The economy collapsed. Education collapsed. Employment, it collapsed. Security collapsed. Even presidency collapsed. National Assembly collapsed. And you have a church that is praying around the clock for 30 years. Because they were praying, they were not watching. I pray that the Nigerian church will begin to watch now. Those three vices act like a snare. And they set a trap for the soul of man. The only escape is to watch. The only escape is to be spiritually alert and awake. That's why Jesus says, watch therefore and pray always because in fact, let me mention this. At the Truth Sanctuary prayer meeting yesterday evening, last night, we, we prayed. We have this prayer meeting and we pray every Saturday between 8 and and 8.45 before the national prayer starts at 9 p.m. And one prayer that we prayed was against a prophecy that came out some months ago. And the brother 
who delivered that prophecy gave specific timelines and phases that some things are going to take place in Nigeria. And he mentioned, he said, there is going to come a dispensation of terror. Terror that we have never seen before. A dispensation of terror. That that dispensation, that it is coming, that it is after that dispensation of terror that a government is going to come and put an end to terror and that government will not be the real government that is going to turn Nigeria, transform Nigeria, then the third government that will come. And that thing just came back to me yesterday. You see, all we are hearing now are prophecies of Tomorrow, everything in Nigeria is going to turn right. That is all the prophecies that we have been receiving now. And that is the prophecy we have been sharing. But yesterday, I remember that one. That somebody said that thing, and he wasn't joking, and he wasn't giving a false prophecy. And I had to tell the brethren, let us pray. That Father have mercy. That dispensation of terror, let it not come. It must not come. And I pray it will not come in the name of Jesus Christ. But globally, God is saying things are going to happen. And if you watch global trend, things are already beginning to happen. Such that what we are dealing with now... It's not even somebody coming to shoot you or somebody coming to kill you. Or, no. Can anybody believe the kind of threat we are now seeing from LGBTQ? From homosexuals? Can anybody believe the kind of things that is going on now in primary schools? That even in Nigeria, in primary schools in Nigeria, they are now producing books. that are teaching defilement, that are teaching LGBTQ. Those are some of the things we are supposed to escape from. That we are not sucked in. You see, the evil that Jesus is talking about is in many dimensions that don't just limit your understanding of it to, oh, somebody wants to come and kill us. Or somebody wants to put us in prison. No, they may not kill you. They may not put you in prison. They may suck you in to the perversion of this age. You may be sucked in into perversion. You may be sucked in into immorality. You may be sucked in into crime, into corruption. That before you realize what has happened, you have already entered the trap. So when Jesus is talking and saying, watch it therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape, it is not just escape from somebody who is going to kill you. It's in various dimensions. Corruption is there. Perversion is there. Defilement is there. Cultism is there. Now they go to primary school to go and recruit Children into cult. Watch and pray so that Satan will not catch your soul. Watch and pray that you may be accounted worthy to escape. Brethren, We are going to stop here for today. I, I have to break the teaching into two. Because we've not even reached half what I thought we are going to share for today. So we can't take everything today. 
we'll just take this as introduction to what we are going to deal with on this issue of watch and pray that you may be accounted worthy to escape. Brethren, we must escape. We must escape. Look, there is a veil of immorality now. All over the country, there is a veil. If I was not born again, when I got born again, I, 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 I doubt if I would be born again now. Because even when you look at what is going on inside the church, you will just come to the conclusion that these Christians are clowns. You will just come to the conclusion that this Christianity is a joke. If not that we have been Christian, we have seen real Christianity many years ago. What is going on now? It's enough to discourage anybody. That's why evangelism has now become very difficult. You talk about Jesus, now people will laugh at you. And so many people that you never thought will fall. They have been sucked in. Our mighty men of God, how many of them are standing? How many of them? Our generals in the church. The people we were looking up to. How many of them can we point to today and say this one is still standing right with the Lord? We saw what some of them did during the politics. And we see what we are, we, we, we all hear all the evil reports about the cultism about the rituals, about the sacrifices. If those men of God could not escape, because that is what it means, they did not escape. They are still alive. They didn't die, but they did not escape. They have been captured. How about us small boys and small girls in the church? How about us small people? How are we going to survive? So when Jesus says, Watch ye therefore and pray that you may be accounted worthy to escape. Brethren, don't limit that escape to somebody is coming to kill me. Oh. They are not coming to kill you now. They, they, Satan doesn't want to kill you now. He wants to suck you in. And he has devised different strategies. That, in fact, some people are already sucked in. They are not even aware. Some people have been captured. They are just marking time in the church. They have no portion again in eternal life. Remember, this matter is about eternal life. That is the prize. It's not about who becomes a millionaire or who becomes a billionaire. That one is irrelevant. It's about eternal life. My prayer for you as you hear this message is that Satan will not succeed in sucking you in. My prayer for you is that you will not be captured. My prayer for you is that you will escape Every snare that Satan has set, you will escape in the name of Jesus. We shall all escape in the name of Jesus. And that is why we are sharing these things. May God grant us grace to escape. We shall continue next week Sunday by the grace of God. May God give us grace to make our ways right and to remain alert and awake unto the coming of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ.